First, let's have a look in our lab setup. We have in total four clusters. Two of them are our clusters for the VMs. So we have a two node Azure Stack HCI cluster with the latest Azure Stack HCI 20H2 operating system in them installed. And here you see two VMs as workload. Uh, let's have a look in one of those VMs. We have just IO meter running here, creating some churn so that we, when we do some backups, we have some churn. Then we have another two node cluster also with VMs in it. This is a two node storage basis direct 2019 cluster with the Windows data center version installed. And here are also two VMs running, one benchmark VM and a Windows 10 machine. And then we have our target clusters where the backups are stored. These are four node clusters with four um, storage basis direct 2019 nodes. And in those four node clusters, we have four virtual disks, so four cluster shared volumes where our data is stored. And then in the cluster, we have the Windows scale out file server role running and the scale out file server has uh, the advantage with the high availability. So here we created four shares. One share is um, pointing to a cluster shared volume. So all the data that is going to this share is in one of those disks. Let's hop over to the Veeam backup and replication installation. It's a V11 with the latest software uh, running in a Windows Server 2019 VM. So here you see we have configured four backups two for the Azure Stack HCI cluster, one to the one scale out backup repository and one for the other, and then also two for the storage basis direct cluster. Let's have a look into the backup infrastructure. We uh, set up two scale out backup repositories. Um, let's look at this one, consisting of four extends. Each extend is pointing to one of those cluster shared volume shares that resist in a cluster shared volume. Let's look at some key advantages while using ReFS in a storage basis direct scale out file server installation that we use in our example as a Veeam backup repository. ReFS has multiple advantages. One would be the mirror accelerated parity volume that is described in the white paper in our scenario as the best of both worlds, a very fast volume, but also has good space efficiency. Then we have fast cloning technology that is very helpful if you do synthetic full backups. We will look at that a little bit later. We have space efficiency with ReFS. So uh, ReFS gives us the possibility to store a block once and then you only store pointers in the other files and that gives you a nice space efficiency. And then we have the data integrity stream technology. And uh, on a ReFS volume, you can turn on data integrity streams that gives the operating system the possibility when it scans the file system periodically, it can find errors on the devices and auto-correct them because we have multiple copies of the same extent stored in a storage basis direct implementation. So let's have a look at the fast cloning technology. And for that, we look in our backup server. Here we have our backup job. And if you we look into the settings and we go to storage, advanced, we see that we use the incremental uh, method, not the reverse incremental, the incremental. And when you do incremental backups, there is a possibility to create a synthetic full backup periodically. Usually you would do that once in a week, but for the demo purposes, I turned it on on every day. So when you have done that and we start an incremental backup, after the incremental backup, uh, it will do a synthetic fall. So let's start up an incremental backup on this cluster. I will speed up the backup process so that we only see the important parts.
now the backup takes place will be really fast you can have a look at the VMs now the hard disk is already done here it's also nearly done so let's go back here and see the overall view now we see that uh, the synthetic 4 kicks in so that's it our synthetic fold is complete the backup will only wrap up and then we are done In this video, we will talk about one of the huge advantages when you use a Microsoft Scale Out file server as your backup target, and it's called continuous availability. Imagine you have to patch your uh, backup repositories. When a backup is running, you can't do that because the backup will fail, or you will have a, maybe a failure in your scale out file server and the advantage of the continuous availability is that the backup will shortly be halted and then will continue on the same volumes and this scenario i want to show in this demonstration here you see i added two more virtual machines to our two node azure stack hci cluster so that we have four of them the reason for that is because our scale out repository here has also four extends and if we back up multiple virtual machines each virtual machine is put on one extent and i will show you now how this uh, continuous availability will work first we go to the failover cluster usually every storage based direct node has csvs so the cluster will care that every compute node has some CSVs and we have four CSVs so every node has one of those. Now for demo purposes I will move all the workloads to the first two nodes because after then I will turn them off to show the continuous availability. So here now one is at node one, two is at node two, three is at node one, and four is at node two. Also, we have our high available scale out file server and the owner of this role is node four. I will change that and move it also to node one. So now every workload is running on the first two nodes. And now I will start our backup. I do a full, an active full, and I will speed up the backup process uh, by speeding up the video. So now the backup is running. All four machines are backing up their disks. And now I go back to the overall view. Now I open Hyper-V Manager and here I have a PowerShell. I will ping the first node and here in the cluster we see our nodes. They are all up and running. The disks are still on the first two nodes and our scale out file server is also on the first node. So now I will turn off the two virtual machines here that are holding all the volumes. So I will go here and just turn them off. Turn off. So they are down now. The ping should stop now. And now it takes a bit for the cluster to recognize that the two nodes are failing. Some heartbeats are going around. And here we should see that the backup now is halted. So we have not write and read failures, but uh, the write is taking very long. So you see here the speed is going down, down to zero. And our cluster should, this is already running on node four. The disks should be also on node three and four because these are the only nodes still running. And the cluster noticed that the two nodes are down. Now the shares are up again. They are now working again. You see here the backup 
is already continuing. So let's see for all machines. We don't have any failure here. And the backup will finish and we will speed up the video again. So the backup is nearly finished. This was an example if we have a failure of our backup repository, it will continue. And you can imagine if you have to patch those nodes, that is even better because you don't have the interruption. The cluster will move the virtual disk to another node and the share will follow. Now let's look at the extensibility of a storage basis direct system that we use here in a scale out file server scenario in our scale out repository. So there are two possibilities to extend a storage basis direct system. The first one is if you have drive slots available in your storage basis direct nodes, you can add drives to those slots. That's called scale up. The other possibility is a scale out. So in our scenario, we have four storage basis direct nodes and we can add a fifth, a sixth and so on to extend our storage. So now let's use our imagination. Let's, uh, let's assume our scale out repository, the first one where the Veeam Zoffs lives, these extends are nearly full. Not as you see here in the example, we would have used most of the capacity. And now we want to look how we can extend that. So we switch over to a Windows Admin Center. And here you see uh, I'm on the S2D3 cluster. If we click on drives, we see here under capacity that nearly all base is assigned to volumes. So here we have the drives. Let's have a look at the drives. There are 24 of those. See that here, 24 drives, and they are 87% full. Now I will extend the cluster, and for that I go over to the failover cluster manager. Here we see our four nodes. I will add nodes. So for that I open the add node. So let me type the name of the node. That's node 5 and as to d 3 node 6. It will scan for the nodes. It found the nodes and now I can add them to the cluster. That will take a bit and I can open here a PowerShell where I remoted to one of the nodes, the first one, the S2D3 node 1 with remote PowerShell, and there I prepared a PowerShell line that will look for physical drives that can be pooled, where can pool is not false, so true, and show them and also show us the storage job. When I click next here and the nodes are added, we should, now you see the join, we should see some new drives here. And this line is an endless loop and it will show every five seconds the output of the get storage job and the get physical disk. So very soon the drive should show up. So now you see the drives. There are two, four, six, should be at least eight. So now we get our drives. So that should be 12. I think every system has six disks. So now we see them and uh, soon the storage jobs should start. So let's have a look at our drives again here. You see already they show up here as can pool unknown in the nodes. Let's order by server and go down here. Here are the drives, some are still in, in the process of getting into the pool. Others are not pooled yet. We look at PowerShell again. The drives are now added to the storage pool. And if when they are in the storage pool, we can use the extents on the drive to ex expand our volumes, our virtual disk. We call them cluster shared volumes in our video. And when they are expanded, we have more space for our backup. So that takes a bit. Now you see they are here. 
So there are now empty, there's a bit space taken because for metadata, but our other drives are full and the new ones are empty. And later, after roughly 15 minutes, the cluster will start an optimized storage pool. What that does is spreading the extents from the used drives to the new drive. So it, it will take a, a reorganization of the storage pool will take place. These drives will be less filled and here will be placed extends from this drive. So we have the performance of all the drives and we have sp space on each drive. First, let's go back to volumes and inventory. And here we see our four storage volumes and they are still at the same size. So I will extend now the volume. I click on the volume and I click on expand. And then we can go here. Let's say I put 370 here. Expand, back to volumes, then another one, expand, also 370, expand, the third one, expand, size is too large, why is that, there's enough space. Let's try again. Otherwise, the optimization has first take place. It doesn't have enough free space yet. But you get the concept. So after it spreads the extents over all volumes, you can also use the rest of it. But now I have a three-way mirror and there has to be enough space on every drive to do that. So let's go back to PowerShell. So now the optimization is finished. Let's have a look here at our disks. You now see that the disks are evenly spread all around 70%. So we can finally so we can finally expand the other two volumes. Let's go here. Expand 370. Expand the last one, 370. Let's go back to volumes. So we see every volume is at 370 gigabytes. And here under drive, we see we have still some space so we can even increase them more. Let's go to Veeam Backup and Replication. And now we could extend also our populate our volumes. So that concludes how to extend a scale out repository where the extends grow. So we have done that through extending our four node S2D cluster with two more nodes. It's called a scale out scenario. And I've shown you how to increase the CSV, we are not creating new CSVs, we extend our CSVs and now our repository extends are bigger.